This video is going to step us through the investigation students do in small groups where they're extracting genetic material from a strawberry. So I'm starting here with a thawed frozen strawberry in a bag. It's nice that it was a frozen strawberry because that process breaks the cell walls and it makes it easier for students to mush it up. The first thing we're going to do is add some warm salt water. So it shouldn't be too hot because you want to be able to mush it. And the instructions say to add 20 milliliters. That's about 20 milliliters. It's, the beauty of this is um, just the rough amounts is perfect. So your, your students don't need to spend a lot of time um, measuring things out. So if the, they don't have to do exactly 20 milliliters. So I notice I got the air out of the bag to make this mushing process easier. And I'm just going to mush this up. My finger is really good to get all that so it's not chunky. All the strawberry. Okay. That's pretty good. Can't get it all. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is add our dish soap and about a spoonful, like a plastic spoonful. Again, amounts don't have to be super perfect. Now this, we're gonna get the air out of the bag again and seal it, but we're not gonna be as aggressive with our mushing because we don't wanna make a ton of suds. It's inevitable that we'll get some, but we wanna mix the soap around there so we break up the cell membranes without getting it overly sudsy. And you can see it's kind of inevitably getting sudsy. But if you mush it really aggressively, it gets really bad. Mix it all in there really good. Okay, next step is our straining. So we're gonna pour this mixture we have into our little makeshift cheesecloth strainer. And I'll speed this up because sometimes it takes a while. So if the cheesecloth does get kind of clogged up, you can have students throw the solids away. Save the rubber band because they're going to put another piece of cheesecloth on. You can lightly squeeze a little more out. And then there's a lot of solids left toss that and I get a new piece of cheesecloth, make my little pocket and put my rubber band around it. And I almost lost my solution. And I'm going to go for round two of straining. Now it's to the point where we have genetic material floating around outside of the cell walls just in this solution. So what we do now, we kind of have to be careful with it because we don't want to break up those long strands of DNA because we want to be able to spool them. So I'm going to take some meat tenderizer, just like a pinch, and add that. And I'm going to very carefully stir. 
So we're adding the meat tenderizer because it gets some of the proteins off the DNA. But we do want to carefully stir because if you stir it really aggressively, it'll break up those long strands that we want to be able to spool out. Okay. Now our last step, I'm going to take this ethanol that I've had on ice and I'm going to very carefully pour it along the side so it layers on top. This is about 20 milliliters. Again, doesn't have to be exact. You can see right at the edge of where the alcohol meets the strawberry, you can start to see this like white stuff form that is the DNA. So I'm going to take this wooden skewer and I'm going to start to spool the DNA. You can kind of see it from the top too. And as I spool it, because it's in these long strings, I can just kind of twist and it'll come right up. So you got to grab a little bit first. And once you have some, you can just start twisting, twisting more and more of it. So you can see we have this glob of kind of mucusy, whitish substance that is extracted, and that is the genetic material.